This film is about greed and the killing of snow leopards. It's about man's eternal desire to just get another bundle of dollars, whatever the cost. This is the 21st century, and it's business as usual for a trapped snow leopard in Central Asia, waiting to be picked up by the trader. <laughs> The spotted fur of a snow leopard is often regarded by tradesmen as exclusive as that of the tiger. The war against poachers and their illegal trade in snow leopard hides and body parts will one day come to an end when there are no snow leopards left. Somewhere between 3,500 and 7,000 snow leopards exist in the wild. Most of these are found in China, Mongolia, and Kyrgyzstan. Together with Siberia, these countries represent some of the worst areas in illegal snow leopard trade. The root of the problem in illegal trading lies in our human nature, greed. But for the snow leopard, it's a matter of life and death. One might think that the snow leopard trade has traditional origins from a time when there was an abundance of wildlife. But religions such as shamanism and Buddhism never taught their believers to kill big predatory animals like snow leopards or tigers. On the contrary, this was thought to bring bad luck. The main motive today is money, or just sheer greed. Big cats have always fascinated hunters and emperors. Their fur has long been attractive as a hunting trophy or draped around the shoulders of powerful men as a symbol of wealth and status. For many women, a coat in imitation leopard fur would do just fine. Unfortunately, there are always those who are looking for the real thing. The southern parts of Siberia are the snow leopard's most northerly habitat. According to legend, when God created the earth, he held his hand over Siberia a little longer so that it got more than its share of natural resources. But another legend tells us that when God realized man was not worthy of this abundance, he froze the land and hid it under a cover of ice and snow. In the same way, God created the animals, placing one big cat as far from humans as possible. We knew him as the Snow Leopard. Explorers and settlers have called Siberia the country east of the sun. 
It has been said that only the migrating birds know where the Siberian taiga is. And it's also been said that no one can really claim to have been to Siberia until they visited it in the wintertime and experienced the freezing cold where running water can be as rare as gold. Siberia has been home to nomads for several thousand years, but it's still a virtually uninhabited country with less than seven people per square mile. Westerners have known Siberia for 500 years since it was first opened to the fur trade and an intense exploitation of its wild game began. During those pioneering days, small groups of tough, reckless and determined men made their way across the frozen swamps and endless forests on foot, by dog sled and on horseback. Often following the rivers, they explored vast tracts of the Siberian interior. In the southern parts of Siberia lies the Cyan Shashinsky Reserve in the Altai Cyan region, a relatively intact ecosystem large enough to allow ecological processes and wildlife populations to fluctuate naturally. This snow leopard track along the frozen Yenisei gives proof to the fact that the Altai Cyan region is one of the most northerly habitats of snow leopards in the world. The Cyan Shushensky Reserve is a very wild area and virtually unexploited, except for a man made dam on the River Yenisei. Wildlife tourists who visit this area of the world will undoubtedly find pleasure here. There's something for everyone sights and sounds. Such as a maral deer belting out his high pitched call to impress his rutting buddies. And a black grouse, also in the mood, trying to attract his girlfriends. The Altai Cyan region is considered by some to be a future El Dorado for wildlife tourism. Virtually unknown today, the Cyan Shashinsky Reserve may be one of the most popular nature reserves of the future. With its steep, rugged mountains and swift, cold streams, it's a place for people with a keen interest in wildlife and new adventures. Конечно, смертность практически врагов у Барса здесь нет. Boris Petrovich Savatsky lives close to the Cyan Shushinsky and has studied its wildlife and the snow leopard of the area for the last 25 years. Допустим, мы за 25 лет нашли съеденных волками, а чтобы Барс конфликтовал с it's his opinion. The snow leopard has practically no enemies except for wolves. During the past 25 years, he has found three lynx eaten by wolves. However, it's very seldom that snow leopards come in conflict with either wolves or lynx.
Snow leopards mainly hunt ibex or steinbok and sometimes maral and musk deer. There are plenty of areas in the Cyan Shashinsky where the ibex lick salt. The snow leopard knows these and catches ibex near them. Another favorite morsel of the snow leopard is the Altai Ular, a common bird of these mountains. During the springtime when the snow leopard is in heat, she likes to eat rhododendron. No one knows why. Probably it stimulates her. In February last year, Mr. Savatsky found three excrements consisting of rhododendron leaves. Probably the best known Siberian animal is the sable. For centuries, Russia paid its debts with the skins of sable, fox, beaver, and other animals. Sometimes, even a snow leopard. About a hundred years ago, only a few pelts of sable and arctic fox could buy 50 acres of land, a log cabin, five horses, 10 cows, and 20 sheep. With any luck, a man could strike it rich in a season. Even today, the skin of a single snow leopard can make a man wealthy. Unfortunately, the lack of jobs and money is an increasing problem in the Central Asian region. Many are attracted to the illegal trade in endangered animals because of the struggle to earn a living. Even some hotels try to sell snow leopard skins to visiting tourists. The habitat of the snow leopard is confined to the mountainous regions of Central Asia, such as the Altai Sayan Mountains of the north, the Tian Shan, Kunlun, Pamir, Hindu Kush, and Kurakuram, further to the southwest, and the Himalayan ranges in the south. The snow leopard is like a ghost, difficult to spot and very rare. Some locals consider him to actually be the spirit of the mountains. To spot him, you must look for that small patch of fur or that small twitch of the tip of his tail behind a rock. Snow leopards leave scrapes, feces and scent sprays where they live. This is how an otherwise solitary animal can stay in contact with others of its kind. Population density is estimated on the number of such traces found per kilometer in line across a given area, as well as on the population density of the species it preys on. But the number of snow leopards is in fact difficult to estimate. Since snow leopard terrain is rugged and researchers have to rely on indications of the animal, rather than direct sightings. Snow leopards are usually found at elevations between 2,000 and 5,000 meters, as is their main prey, the ibex. Another important prey is the musk deer. A shepherd will occasionally kill a snow leopard or a wolf to protect his livestock. If forced to choose between saving his animals and sparing the snow leopard, any shepherd knows his job. But the conflict of interest between livestock owners and snow leopards is not as big a problem in the Central Asian countries of Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. 
The traditional method of using dogs to protect livestock against wolves and the occasional snow leopard is the most effective one. But in many areas, the livestock are only kept in poorly constructed pens during the night. The greatest danger for the snow leopards is the same as it is for us, intense human population growth. Areas void of people are becoming increasingly rare. Overgrazing in areas with too much livestock reduces the numbers of wild animals that are the snow leopards' natural prey. Ibex sometimes feed in the same areas as sheep and cattle but they prefer not to have them as neighbors, especially when domestic animals have overgrazed the land. According to scientists, a very small number of all livestock living in snow leopard territory in Central Asia are actually killed by snow leopards. Wolves are responsible for most kills and even include an unlucky dog at times. But wild animals are the wolves' chief prey. When a dead animal is found, it's difficult to determine whether a snow leopard, wolf, or bear has made the kill. It might even have been a yeti. The field evidence is often contaminated and in bad condition by the time the carcass is located. In this case, there were wolf excrements near the carcass of an ibex. And this trophy from an Argali sheep was most likely not left by a snow leopard, but by a poacher, the snow leopard's worst enemy. Efforts are being made to create more reserves for the snow leopard one way of limiting overgrazing is to ban livestock within such areas. Just as important as the reserves are corridors or transboundary buffer zones that make it easier for snow leopards to pass between mountain areas, thus giving them a better chance to spread. If livestock is to be moved and kept outside these reserves, it has to be a worthwhile option for the shepherds. A shepherd and his family live very close to poverty in most countries home to snow leopards. So it's essential that these people be given a good reason to accept such arrangements. In a land this harsh, no one rides for free. Sergei Otokov is one of several inspectors from the Cyan Shashansky Reserve. Always on the lookout for poachers, he is also a member of a special unit called Team Bars, whose sole purpose is to protect snow leopards against poachers. Like many inspectors in these remote Russian outposts, Sergei's salary is low. He's given free outdoor clothing and a backpack and expected to be able to survive in any climate, however harsh.
These southern parts of Siberia, in the Altai Cyan mountain region, are a vast wilderness, where poaching is common, as in many other mountain areas around the world. For some men, it's just a way of life. It's just the way things are, and how they have been for a long time. A steak from an ibex is good food for the family, and there are plenty of them in these mountains. <laughs> Even though the snow leopard is protected against hunting in all countries, laws are difficult to enforce. Snow leopards are killed illegally every year. It's hard to say just how many die each year, but from the fresh skins on the market, someone is making a killing. Just the skull goes for $50. Sergei Otokov of the Cyan Shashinsky Reserve knows that most poachers come from the Tuva region, bordering Mongolia. Trade in wildlife is often connected to the drug trade. During the 1990s, several of Sergei's colleagues disappeared in the mountains bordering the Tuva region. No bodies were ever found. But state officials in the Cyan area strongly suspect drug traders, probably politically connected in the Tuva region. To make matters worse, cases involving wildlife are usually not prioritized by the authorities. In the Middle Ages, the Great Silk Road passed from the eastern parts of Asia through the land of Tuva, today a part of Russia. Six to eight hundred years ago, Tuva was part of Genghis Khan's mighty empire and the influence of his golden horde is still seen in the present-day life of the country, both in people's appearances and traditions. This is a region of the world where modern life seems to be held at bay. Old traditions mix with the new, and peasants are grateful for every dollar they can get their hands on. A century ago, the region of Tuva was taken from the realm of China and annexed by Russia in 1944. Today it shares a border with Mongolia. Its remote location and rather late entry into the Soviet Empire has left Tuvinians semi-nomadic, often clannish and poor. The majority of the population have continued their traditional way of life, of horse and livestock breeding. Wildlife conservation is not as high on the agenda for shepherds and farmers as for visiting tourists from Europe and America. Of course, they understand the problems threatening the snow leopard, but they can't afford to make it a priority in their daily life. Their reality is making sure their animals are properly looked after. Protecting and caring for the herd and the family is a full-time job. So the issue of protecting snow leopards against extinction is not really at the top of their list.
In these regions, a family could easily live on the sale of one skin for a very long time. Illegal trading is just part of the daily life in Mongolia and several other Central Asian countries. And it will continue to be that way as long as there is a market for endangered animals. A poacher killed this snow leopard in the Mongolian mountains. He then sold the skin to a trader in Tuva. Later, it was transported to this house with the hopes of selling it to a man from Western Europe. The illegal trade in Siberian tiger and snow leopard skins is a very sensitive business, and criminals won't hesitate to protect their business any way they can. But as always when a lot of money is involved, greed can take the upper hand. While trying to sell this skin, the criminals took a calculated risk of getting caught. Here, $5,000 goes a long, long way. When the foreigner told the Russians that skins are cheaper in Mongolia and that he might buy some there instead, they told him he should do business with real trustworthy businessmen. He had better do it with these Russians. The Russians call the Mongolians cheaters and not trustworthy at all. And so the business talk went on with suspicion on both sides. The meeting did illustrate one thing very clearly. There is a market for snow leopards in southern Siberia. The skin of a snow leopard is normally much cheaper in Mongolia than in Siberia. On the black market, a good pelt sells for approximately three to five hundred U.S. dollars, a lot less than the normal price in Siberia. This is a lot of money for most people in these parts of the world. Trading is usually done at local markets. The first day, a call is made to someone. The next day, it's time for business. Illegal trading in Mongolia is not a small problem. It's a huge one. Most pelts from the Mongolian or Kyrgyzstan mountains wind up on the market in cities like Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia and Kashgar in western China. Smuggling is done on horseback through wild terrain or by car following small mountain roads. Widespread corruption among customs and police officers make life easy for smugglers. Clear-sightedness never guarantees perfect vision. Wealthy customers mean healthy business for the illegal trade in endangered species. As late as the 1990s, trophy hunting was still practiced in Mongolia. Medals awarded for record snow leopards are on display at the museum in Ulaanbaatar. Today, a single pelt in Kyrgyzstan can be sold for the equivalent of 60 monthly salaries there. A snow leopard fur coat made from 6 to 11 pelts can fetch as much as $60,000 in Southeast Asia. And that's one reason why snow leopards are still killed, and why Central Asian police want to put poachers on the endangered species list.
Illegal trade in endangered animals is a reality. It's going on right now. And there are some huge problems to solve before it will come under control. The exclusive price tag of a snow leopard will always tempt men to try and kill them. Usually snow leopards are trapped and then shot while still in the trap, or sometimes taken alive for a possible sale. Kyrgyzstan has a long tradition of capturing snow leopards alive. In the Soviet era, there was an institution called the Tsul Kombinat, whose purpose was to procure live wild animals for foreign buyers. Today's trappers still use a steel trap. The snow leopard is a creature of habit and known to follow the same routes and trails. Sooner or later, he's bound to get caught in one of these hidden steel traps. Now that they're out of work and presumably out of money as well, these men who work for Zulkominat are likely to pose a significant threat to the snow leopard population in Kyrgyzstan, especially with their connections and special skills. It's been estimated that 90% of all snow leopards in western zoos today originally came from Kyrgyzstan. Other parts from the bodies of snow leopards are sold in China for use in traditional Chinese medicine. Chinese police, however, have intensified their efforts to control this illegal trade. Focusing international interest on the plight of the snow leopard has now led to more severe punishments for shooting and trading snow leopards compared to just a few years ago. Yeah, seems good. Seems good this Winter? Winter skin? Chinese zoos, notorious for their treatment of all captive wildlife, constitute the same kind of unlimited market for live animals. Unsuccessful zoo breeding of the animals has increased the pressure to capture snow leopards in the wild. <laughs> Authorities in Kazakhstan estimate that less than 1% of all illegal trade across its borders are stopped by enforcement agencies. Kyrgyzstan has formed a special snow leopard task force called Team Bars. The same kind of force exists also in Siberia. Bars is Russian for snow leopard. These teams have been established to carry out undercover investigations, question, and if necessary, arrest suspects, confiscate equipment, weapons, vehicles, and skins, as well as live snow leopards. Kalmakov Roman works for Team Bars. This is one anti-poaching group that is posing a real challenge to organized crime involved in the illegal trade of endangered animals. Violent counteractions can be expected anywhere and at any time. Some of Team Bars's men have been severely injured or threatened. In this situation, a tourist was trying to buy a skin. He was also equipped with a hidden camera. Nothing that I have, but I have yeah. nothing. Don't, don't do it. Okay. It's dangerous. Okay. So how much? How many you can have? Well, I can't pay you very much for, for a skin like this. It's, it's not very good skin, you know. Problem. As soon as someone lays money on the table, Kalmakov Roman and his partner will make the arrest. A little bit disappointed on the skin, but... Uh... Just 
Что вы делаете? Вы не имеете права. Dead or alive, when it comes to hunting snow leopards, it's no holds barred, especially when there's an extra buck or two in it for a poacher. And trapping snow leopards is less risky than running a prostitution business or than murder and blackmail. Several times over the past years, Team Bars has succeeded in confiscating live snow leopards from various criminals. All of these captive cats have been kept under miserable conditions, sometimes for years. Often, the animals are three-legged, the result of a fourth paw amputated by poachers as it sat fast in the steel trap. The confiscated cats were to be sold to wealthy people in Russia, China or Kazakhstan, or to zoos or people who just keep them as status symbols. Today, the snow leopards that were confiscated are kept in a hidden facility. Maybe one or two of the confiscated snow leopards are to be released to run free in the future. The work of Team Bars has been successful so far. Traders are afraid of being caught, so the business is very sensitive and may even be on the decrease. For more than 2,000 years, the bones of big cats such as tigers and snow leopards have been used throughout Asia in traditional Chinese medicines. The bone of the tiger is believed to have an anti-inflammatory effect, particularly in cases of arthritis. But the main healing effect is no doubt a mental one. The belief is that strength and power can be derived from eating slaughtered cats or powder made from them. Although other parts of the animal are used to treat various ailments as well, the bones are still the most commonly used part. As tigers have become increasingly difficult to find, the market has turned to other big cats, such as snow leopards, as an alternative. Often, traditional Chinese medicine manufacturers list endangered species on their packaging for commercial reasons even when the ingredients of these medicines do not, in fact, come from the animals shown on the labels. More often than not, the tiger bones listed on the packages are probably goat bones or something else. Scientists have actually proved that the bones of a rat living in the northern parts of China have exactly the same chemical substances as found in tiger's bones. However, much of the mystique and hopes of supernatural health and strength would probably be lost if people were told that a rat or goat could do the same for them as the bones of the mighty tiger or snow leopard. <laughs> According to practitioners, traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, is an empirical science of healing that has proved its worth in Asian countries for more than 2,000 years. Although TCM is more philosophical than empirical in its understanding of bodily functions, it is possible that some of its methods work. This is still a matter of widespread debate. 
Somewhere between 25% to half of the world's population use traditional oriental medicine. And currently, China exports about 600 million US dollars worth of traditional Chinese medicines worldwide every year. Within the next 10 years, the market is expected to increase its turnover from today's level to approximately $12 billion. With a population of 1.2 billion people, China is the biggest consumer of endangered animals in the world. Increasing wealth will probably lead to an even higher level of consumption than that of today. More snakes, lizards, turtles, apes, and even big cats will be served as exotic dishes. At this very moment, the fate of the last snow leopards hang in the balance. The continuing threat of extinction for these beautiful cats is like the sunset. Infatuated by its intense beauty, we have been blinded by its light and desired to capture its glory for ourselves. Finally, the sun has set as we have placed its light in a box to keep and hold for all time, not knowing that we will never look upon it again. Maybe we are blind and unwilling to open our eyes to what lies ahead for the snow leopard if nothing is done to curb this senseless slaughter and raping of one of nature's most beautiful creations. Hopefully, we'll react before it's too late. But without the support of the local population, efforts to save the snow leopard are doomed illegal snow leopard trading has to stop. This is no easy task. When the mountains lose their last snow leopard, the last light of a beautiful sunset will die and be gone forever. The title of this film, Spirit of the Mountains, was suggested by the words of a Siberian shaman. There are many reasons why we should listen to what he has to say. According to the shaman, he is the only one who is in touch with the spirit of the snow leopard. He knows the ancestral spirits and can invoke them or repulse them. He knows the secret language of the animals. And he walks in the Shadowlands. Mystical sounds of hoofbeats carry him on his flight to another world, to the mountains where the snow leopard roams. There, he can speak to the spirit of the snow leopard. He says the snow leopard lives high in the snow-covered mountains. He warns us that if we carry on as we have, we will see him only in old slides or as stuffed animals. The shaman knows there are very few snow leopards left and that human encounters are usually bad for them, especially with hunters. He also tells us that the spirit of the snow leopard is a mirror to the world and where mankind is going. The snow leopard is the spirit of the mountains.